Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. And one of the great things about the Raspberry Pi 4 is it's got better I.O. performance. It's got USB 3 and it's got gigabit Ethernet and they both run at full speed. So I thought to myself, well, if I take like four hard drives and connect them to the Raspberry Pi 4, what kind of file server, what kind of network attached storage, what kind of RAID options can we use to, with this little board to make a cheap file server, cheap NAS, are on your network. Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So the Raspberry Pi 4 has got four USB ports, two are USB 3 and two are USB 2.0. Now obviously, if we were building a professional uh, file server, professional NAS unit, we would want things like you know, SATA or M2 or SCSI or all the other kind of different interfaces that you can get for connecting hard drives. Here we are limited to USB, but we can still connect several USB hard drives to the board. Now there are two types of USB external hard drives, those that get their power from the USB port and those that have external power. Now the power that can come through the Raspberry Pi and out to the drives is quite limited. Even if you're using a three or a three and a half amp power supply, you're not gonna be able to connect too many hard drives. In fact, I've been able to connect one hard drive without external power very, very easily. Two is kind of touch and go, more than that doesn't work. So for this testing, what I've actually used is some USB hubs that are powered, so they have their own power supply, which means when you connect the hard drive, it's drawing its power from the hub and not from the Raspberry Pi 4. The alternative is to use hard drives which have their own external power supply, and the majority of three and a half inch external hard drives come with their own power supply, and then you can connect as many of those as you like to the uh, Raspberry Pi without worrying about drawing too much current. And the other thing worth mentioning, of course, is because it only has two USB 3 ports, then actually you might end up using a hub anyway so that you can connect in more and more hard drives. So my thinking is this, is that the Raspberry Pi can use drives individually when you connect them to the USB port, or it can use them in combination in RAID setups. Now I have a whole video on RAID, which I'll link to in the description below, and maybe a card up here somewhere, which explains a different RAID level. So I won't go into that now. So I experimented with one hard drive, two hard drives, four hard drives in different combinations of RAID setup to see what kind of performance you get over your network uh, using the Raspberry Pi 4. Now there is some specialist software you can actually get for the Raspberry Pi, which is called Open Media Vault, which does a lot of this stuff for you with a nice uh, friendly uh, web interface. I did it the old fashioned way from the command line, creating the different RAID sets myself, but the principles are basically the same. So first of all, I started with one hard drive, plugged it in and kind of got myself a baseline measure to see what kind of performance a normal hard drive will give you. Now these two and a half inch drives tend to be a little slower. They tend to only have 5,400 RPM, okay? And maybe a maximum theoretical transfer rate of about 150 megabytes a second, often much slower than that. The other thing worth mentioning, I'm just doing sequential read and write tests. I haven't done any random read and write tests. Basically, I've got a very big file, 1.4 gigabyte, which I copy on and off the different RAID setups to see what kind of speed you can get. And the reason for that, of course, is mainly if you're gonna build that kind of network attached storage, you're probably gonna be doing streaming of media or maybe some archiving, that kind of stuff like that. So I haven't really worried about too much about random read and writes, particularly small sized random read and writes. Okay, so let's look at what happened with just one hard drive as a baseline. Okay, so as I said, this drive is fairly slow, 5,400 RPM, it's one terabyte drive, 2.5 inches, and it draws one amp, so you're gonna need to use some kind of other way of getting the power. Now, I also use an SSD drive that I have. It's a USB 3 SSD drive to kind of give us the difference between a hard drive and an SSD drive. Now, there are two types of tests. There's write tests, which is these two columns here on the left, and there's read tests, these two columns here on the right. Basically, one of them was over the network, SMB, that stands for server message block, Windows networking, basically. So I could share the drive on the uh, network with Windows, I could then go into it and copy files to and from it. And I also copy just internally from a RAM disk, so not from the SD card, from actually a file stored in RAM, then that kind of gives us an indication of how fast 
that device can run when it's just dealing with RAM. So let's get to it. The first one hard drive on its own, when you are writing to it, so you're copying a file to it over Windows networking, it can write 49 megabytes a second. Now, uh, when you're doing it with just a RAM disk internally, that goes up to 109 megabytes a second. So you can see that writing over Windows is a lot slower than if it's doing it just from the, uh, the, the internal memory. And if that was an SSD, then that goes up here to 60 megabytes a second when you're writing over Windows networking and 125 megabytes a second when you're doing it internally. Now, reading is a different story. We can see here that I could copy the file off the Raspberry Pi, off that one hard drive, over onto something else, over Windows networking at 95 megabytes a second, which is basically the most that you're gonna get out of gigabit ethernet. If you're using Windows to do the copying, this number can actually seem to be a bit higher because Windows reports megabytes and megabits per second slightly differently. And I've got a whole video about that on my channel. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And when you're copying from the hard drive to the RAM disk, you're getting 112 megabytes a second when you're using the hard drive and 238 megabytes a second when you are using just the RAM disk. So here, we're kind of getting towards the more towards the maximum of what you can get with USB 3 and we'll see that. But the key takeaway from this is that when you're reading, okay, you're gonna get, even with just one hard drive, you've already got to the maximum of gigabit ethernet. And that's really, really good in the sense that you don't need much in terms of a hard drive and a Raspberry Pi to get the most you can get out of your network without going to some other crazy networking. When you're doing writing though, it's about half that speed. After one, of course, comes two. So I took two drives and plugged it in, and I decided to use it in one of two ways. One is RAID 0, which stripes the data across drives one at a time, which means you're kind of like using the two drives simultaneously, but there's no redundancy. If one drive fails, you lose all the data on both drives. The other way of using it is in a mirroring setup, RAID 1, where everything that's on one drive is automatically copied onto the second drive. Now that can give you some performance increase in terms of reading performance, and also gives you some redundancy. If you lose one drive, the other one's still got all the data on it. So let's have a look at what happened when I configured two drives on the Raspberry Pi 4. And so now with two drives, RAID 0 and RAID 1, the writing numbers here, the reading numbers here, and as we can see, writing to the RAID 0, writing to the RAID 1 with two hard drives, we've got slightly better performance, 57 megabytes a second, so that's gone up. So the read and the write speeds are better than one drive when you're reading and writing over Windows networking. Again, notice here for the reading, we're at the maximum you can get with uh, gigabit ethernet. Now, when you're doing it with uh, the RAM disk, we can see here that the RAID 0 write speed is much faster. We went up from 109 to 178 megabytes uh, a second. However, the RAID 1 overall write speed is actually slow. It's now 68 megabytes a second, down from 109. Now, why is that? Because in RAID 1, 0, as it's writing, it writes to one drive, then the other drive, to one drive, then the other drive, and effectively you're halving the amount of writing you need to do because you've got two devices receiving those write requests. When you're with RAID 1, you double it because what has to go to one drive also has to go to the other, so you actually have to do every write twice. And we can see that it goes down from 109 to 68. And we can also see that the overall read speed is very, very fast when you're reading from these internally over to the RAM, there's 293 megabytes a second for both of these. Of course, when you're doing it over the gigabit ethernet using Windows networking, you're not gonna get that because this is greater than what gigabit ethernet can give you. Now, after two comes three. I did do a bit of playing around with three hard drives. However, the results weren't really interesting enough to include in this video. So I jumped straight to four hard drives and connected those up. Now with four hard drives, I'm using what's called a RAID 10 configuration, which basically means that you've got two drives that are RAID zero. So they are interleaving, striping the data between the two of them. You've got a second two drives that are also in a RAID zero, the two drives, the data being interleaved between them. And then all four, because Become RAID 1 mirroring, so everything that's on this pair is copied onto this pair. Now there are two ways of doing that. One is you can actually just create one RAID set of RAID 0, another RAID set of RAID 0, and then say, let's create now a new RAID set of RAID 1. I tried that, and I also just said to the Linux um, RAID contro controls, please just create me a RAID 10 with these four devices, and it handles all that stuff for you, and we'll talk about the difference in the performance of those. 
And now with these four drives, I've called it RAID 1 plus 0 and RAID 10. This one being the manual one that I set up, this one being the automatic one that I set up. And first of all, we can see the write speeds are way down. So there are four drives here. And one of the reasons this is way down is because actually if we look at the speeds from RAM, it's way down. I mean, look at this, 40 megabytes and 64 megabytes. And that's because now the USB ports have to handle four hard drives. And I think we're getting to the point here of all those requests that are going just over the USB ports is adversely affecting the speed that we can get for reading and writing. So write speed significantly down over the network, 57 down to 35. Again, the read speeds are maxed out. But RAID uh, 1, uh, 1 plus 0 and RAID 10 write speeds are just down in general, down from 178 megabytes a second with RAID 0 to 40 and 64. And again, now, I think that's because you have to deal with four hard drives and you have to write, you have to send so many of those requests down there that it's just overloading the USB. Uh, but with RAID 10, there's only one upside, and that is look at this read performance. Okay, so when you're saying read a file, it's getting it from all four hard drives. It can get it in big blocks, not necessarily lots of little commands, lots of big uh, sequential things, and you're getting 350 megabytes a second, which I think is kind of like the maximum we're going to get out of USB 3. So if there was a, a reason for wanting to do this internally on the Pi, that's giving you some good results. But again, over the network, over Windows networking, you're at the maximum of, uh, of Ethernet, or gigabit Ethernet. So what are your best options? Well, one hard drive gives you reasonable write speeds, okay, and it's already greater than what you're gonna get over gigabit ethernet, so that's good, but of course, if you put in a better hard drive, not, you know, with a 7,200 RPM or even 10K or 15K, then these numbers are gonna be better and you're gonna get good write speeds and of course you're gonna maintain those read speeds. But of course here there's no redundancy whatsoever. If you're using RAID 1, then you are gonna get even better write speeds here. So that is bumped up slightly, that could be an advantage for you. Again, the uh, the uh, ETH gigabit Ethernet speed. So say if you're trying to use this actually on your Raspberry Pi, you're doing something on your Raspberry Pi, doing some building of you know the Linux kernel or building some software or even doing other things with some big files, then of course the internal speeds are gonna be much greater. And then of course using RAID 1 will gives you this great advantage of having the right, greater write speeds uh, but and but oh, you've got the uh, mirroring, you've got the redundancy there. So if you are going to connect two hard drives, then I would go with RAID 1, uh, get the redundancy, and then connect it over your network uh, to give you kind of decent read and write speeds for Windows networking. And so there you have it. So what we've discovered is that if you even use just one drive, you're definitely going to get enough throughput to uh, get the maximum for your gigabit Ethernet that you've got in your home. If you're using two or more drives, you can use those for redundancy. Another way of doing it, of course, is to use two drives independently. And actually, this is what I do on one of my servers. And you just use the one drive and then you have a nighttime job that copies everything from one to the other. And then actually what you're getting is an actual backup of what's on the other drive. Okay, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget the new Speed Test G uh, channel, and you'll find links to that in the description below. And uh, well, I suppose that's it. I'll see you in the next one.